Hi there folks, welcome back to my channel and I'm out and about again today this time I'm out in Ayrshire more specifically South Ayrshire in a place called Crossagul Abbey which is just outside the village of Maple. so I'm going to head in in a moment and let you all see what's going on and before I go any further, if you like my channel, if you like my videos please uh, click on the, on the subscription button uh, click on that notification bell Leave some likes and leave, leave some comments, it's always really appreciated. And hope you all enjoy my visit to Crush and Yule. And as you can spot behind me, they actually are doing some uh, some work on the on parts of the ruin. Because try to kind of protect it. Because it's an old place and it is a ruin. So I'm going to stop jabbing on and get myself in. See you all when I get inside. It's Crusher Gule Abbey and it's historic Scotland. And that's the opening times. That's how much it has to get in. And as a Maple Village is that way, so it's just on the main road. Um, yeah. Even though they're doing a lot of kind of conservative work, it's a little to have a walk, a wee wander around. And um, as I walked the boat like in the past, as one of two clinic monasteries in the whole of Scotland, the other one being Paisley Abbey. Uh, this one actually like it's a it's a daughter monastery of Paisley. Well, right, excuse the noise of the traffic, we are just off the main road. I was talking to the wee guy in the ticket office there, and he said that there is a local legend that Robert the Bruce, uh, King, King of Scots, was actually born here. Uh, Crush the Ghoul, uh, the site where the, the old infirmary was, again, something we've got to take a, maybe a pinch of salt, but it's an interesting story, especially as it is believed that uh, there's a, the other story that says it was born at Turnbury, which is just slightly further down the coast. So I'm just going to go for a wonder and let you all see what's going on. Uh, and this abbey was actually slighted and attacked by the English army during the War of Independence because of uh, the connection to Robert the Bruce. So just going on through this door here. Right, okay, this has been the nave. This has been the west end of the church. You see, it's the the west door there. And even though there is more of uh, the monastery surviving here than at Paisley, it's a, a narrower church. Like we all do there. And this would have been the choir. So this is where the, where the, the monks would have sang masses and said prayers. And at the far end, would have been where the high altar would have been. So 
has to be some here. So these make it as wee arches there. That's a, a said layer. That's where the the clerics, the kind of clergy they've sat. And if I see correctly, it looks like there might be four there. But like what they have in Paisley. Yeah. The high altar would have been behind where the scaffolding is now. And I go back to where I came. So this here takes you into the cloister. So this has been where the monks would have sat, they would have studied, there would have been a roof. I'll go in there in a minute. I stay strange. Let's go over and see what this is over here. Yeah, that's the well. They probably would have kept it a lot cleaner back then. So, there's a tower over there. And that back leads back into the church itself. was So this is the chapter house. You can hear the echo. This has been where the monks would have discussed business with the abbot sitting there and his new special seat.
So that's the east end of the church. So that's bit here, and looks like including the tower house as well. It was the abbot's church, it was the abbot's house. So I think these bits here are the cellars. There's like Crusher Ghoul, like Paisley, did become very successful and very wealthy. Especially as it did have, well, both of them did actually have connections with uh, the rulers of Scotland. Burning water. I wasn't expecting that. So, so even though there were only two, two clinic monasteries in Scotland, like Crusher Gill and Paisley, they did have influential connections. There's a uh, kitchen building over there. I think generally with a lot of these kind of monasteries they can kind of had to have their kitchen in a separate stone building. They probably have changed location of the kitchen over, the over time. So a lot of time if there's going to be a fire anywhere, it'd very likely start in the kitchen. So, you're able to get up just a bit there, I think. But a lot of the building has been left in quite a ruinous state. Yeah, this is as high up as you can get in the tower house at the moment. That's where I've seen some of it before. So that's running water that I saw only a moment ago. It's actually from the monastery's drain. So essentially it's been a similar idea to the Russian to Roman toilets. If having flushing uh, kind of flowing water, try and flush everything away. down here. Oh, I think I would have been in here. 
Okay, this place is kind of a water. All these wee different wee passages. Three different rooms. And if you do come here, just watch your head in some of the lentils. Uh, as I said in one of my other videos, I'm four foot eleven. And this lentil here's at head height. So, in some places, even people like me are having to, to bend down. There's me just running at the back. Yeah, so might have been the break the bakehouse, the brewery and the granary back there. What we can just make out that we've got the nesting boxes up there for the dove kit. Okay, I've just come up the spiral surface, got the gatehouse for uh, our fuel, and these are the views from the top. And back that way, as we back to Glasgow, and uh, you can just make out there's a That's me just finished my wander around, cro around Crossroguel Abbey. Hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope this video has kind of piqued your interest and you all want to come along and visit this area and I hope to see you all in the next video. So I'll see you all later.